on the 11th day of October, Halloween gave to me 11 Angels Wrestling, 10 Ghostly Hitchhikers, 9 Basement Clowns, 8 Vampire Cruises, 7 Silent Heroes, 6 Prequel Bloodstones, 5 Diabolical Fledglings, 4 Vampire Pianists, 3 Dead Professors, 2 Michelle Actresses, and a Radu drooling something bloody. Hey everyone, welcome to another entry of the 31 Days of Halloween. We are closing out our second series of movies that we're covering uh, this time around. And we are, of course, ending with Hell House LLC Part 3, Lake of Fire. And this is an incredibly frustrating movie for me. Because it is half of exactly what I want out of this movie and half total bullshit. So, let's very quickly take a spin through the plot, because there is some, and it's worth talking about. So, this is set up in, in Hell House LLC 2, where Russell Wynn, this super rich, you know, media magnate, has purchased the Abaddon Hotel. And he is also the one that has assembled all the footage, like all the, the footage that came from... Uh, part two is supposed to be footage that he was sent. Although we never met him in part two. So in this one, he has purchased the Abaddon Hotel and is going to put on a new show there. And it's not going to be the Hell House LLC show, of course. It is a show that apparently he did in New York, kind of an interactive dinner theater sort of thing called Insomnia, based on the Faust legend. You know... A deal with the devil, wink, wink. And the movie is really a riff on the first one because it is largely a crew of people setting up a new show to do inside the Abaddon Hotel. And it is also a continuation of the lore. And as they're setting things up in this house of course weird stuff starts to happen people start complaining like hey man we probably shouldn't be here and people are starting to see things and it could be dangerous like we don't want to do a repeat of what happened on october 8th 19 uh when the hell else llc business uh which they attributed to a malfunction when all of that went tits up we want to make sure that we're not repeating the same mistakes of the past. And Russell Wynn, who is this, you know, thin, charismatic, uh, you know, fairly handsome dude with this scar running down the left side of his face uh, because of a car accident he was in. Th you know, he's the one that's like, no, 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 everything's going to be fine. This is all going to work out. I promise you, everything's going to be cool. And... Against this backdrop, we have a new host of the Morning Mystery Show, which I don't know what happened to the previous host. They just sort of say, oh, she's no longer there. And I feel like that is a real misstep. But So we have Vanessa now, who is the new host. By the way, I complained about some of the performances in part two. The performances in part three are largely just fine. There are, you know, certainly a handful that you're like, eh, this is okay, I guess. But there are a couple that are pretty good, and I think uh, Elizabeth Vermilia, I think is how you pronounce her name, as Vanessa, the uh, new reporter of Morning Mysteries and, and the one exploring the secrets of the Abaddon Hotel and also... Russell Wynn and what he's doing there. I think she's quite good. And uh, so all of that is going on. We're not cutting back and forth to a bunch of different, uh, you know, bits and bobs through time that made part two so confusing and so frustrating to know, like, where am I in the chronology of this story? This one, it, this one is much more straightforward. It gets back to basics with... Uh, the first one uh, and, and mimics a lot of that style some of the stuff that happens is genuinely creepy 
it doesn't quite achieve the eeriness, I think, of, of part one. But it's pretty close. Most of the movie is really good. And the, the other thing that I like about it is that it expands not necessarily the lore, but the, the parameters of the story. Because the first one, you get in the Abaddon Hotel and you're pretty much in the Abaddon Hotel the whole time. With this one, because it's Vanessa Shepard, intrepid reporter, running around trying to find information about Russell Wynn and the Abaddon Hotel and his relationship to it, that you get her interviewing other people, uh, including a local priest who apparently has this relationship with Russell Wynn. And I should probably go ahead and just issue a spoiler warning right here. So if you want to jump ahead like two minutes, I'm going to explain what happens on the back end of Hell House LLC 3. And if you've never seen it, I would kind of recommend it. And even though the resolution that what I'm about to spoil is incredibly stupid, <laughs> but you should experience it for yourself. So uh, let's say starting here, here are our spoilers. Okay. So. What happens is, all right, everybody, sit down. So Russell Wynn, uh, it turns out, died in this car accident that he uh, had years before. And died in such a way that they brought him back, of course. He's not a g -g -g ghost in this movie. But he came back with this heavy burden, apparently tasked by heaven to go to the Abaddon Hotel and seal up the Lake of Fire. Because the priest says... The only thing that can seal up this lake of fire that Andrew Tully is trying to bring to fruition and throwing all these souls into is an angel. So he is an honest to goodness, our hero, Russell Wynn, honest to goodness angel, even though one of the things I like about the movie is that they sort of nod to the fact that he might be doing this for nefarious purposes and has made this deal with Andrew Tully, the previous owner of the hotel and you know, demon, I guess, or, or representative of hell at this point. And the end of the movie is no shit. Them kind of wrestling in the basement in a very silly way. And then once all hell breaks loose, uh, no pun intended at the end of the movie, then everybody's okay again, you know, and up to and including the people from the first movie who are no longer in hell apparently, but they just can't leave the hotel which is a weird fate. So that's what happens. That, that is the end of our spoilers. And here is the problem. The problem is that I like 80% of this movie, 85% of the movie, where you're just doing the scare gags and you're running around piecing together the mystery. But once you get the answer to what the mystery of this movie is and what Russell wins relationship is to the house and the ultimate fate of everybody inside it's stupid it is it is head scratchingly jaw droppingly dumb and even when you get your coda on the end of it to sort of let you know how this ties back into the first movie and and the fate of those characters that is also unsatisfying and stupid it blows my mind that after three movies, that the plane just crashes instead of lands for this series. And it's really frustrating because so much of this movie, if that had, if, if we had stuck the landing on the ending, and I don't know how you fix it, you know, I mean, I, I haven't put much thought into this particular problem, but I am sure that I could come up with something that I would personally find more satisfying. But the, the fact of the matter is, uh, Stephen Cognetti, the guy who writes and directs all of these, he thought this was fine. He thought this was a good ending. And so that leads me to believe that his perception of what makes a good ending to a trilogy just does not align with mine. And I'm not saying that he's wrong and I'm right. I'm saying we have very different ideas of what the ending of this trilogy should have looked like. But I do at least admire the fact that he brings it to a conclusion. Even if it is one that I find wildly unsatisfying and very silly. 
but I do like everything. And, and honestly, up to the point where things go wrong at the night of the Insomnia production, the opening night, I like everything leading up to that. I think it's all really good and kind of intriguing and interesting. And so that 85% of the movie, I really think is a, a quite good found footage film. And then you get to this final 15%, the, the final moments of the movie, and it's just like un, not unwatchable, but it's, it's just completely off-putting. And even the, when all hell is breaking loose inside, even that I find to be pretty silly and very unscary. Um, at least with the first movie, you had, you know, the girl chained up in the basement and all of a sudden there's this explosion in the basement that looks pretty good for it being an indie found footage horror movie and all that. This doesn't have any of that. This just feels very, very silly when, you know, the carnage happens. And also, there are no stakes, as we learn throughout the course of the film, that the stakes are also very, very, very low. And yeah, it, it's just a, an exercise in frustration for me. And I'm curious if any of you have had the same reaction. Those of you who, like me, watch either found footage movies or you watched Hell House LLC and thought that was a, a pretty good example of this stuff and ended up getting conned, being duped into watching the other two. Uh, if, if you had the same reaction. So let me know on Discord if, uh, if if you have seen this movie and what you thought of the ending because I thought it was dumb as shit. And this is... I'm not throwing shade at Stephen Cognetti. Making movies is hard. Ending a trilogy is hard. I'm not saying he's a bad person or a bad filmmaker. I'm saying that this decision did not work for me. So, yeah, that is Hell House LLC 3 Lake of Fire. As a series, it is a great example of how, uh, as I said when we talked about the second one, that you learn the wrong lessons. And I feel like part three is a course correction where it got back to what made the first one good and all of that stuff worked. And then in the last, you know, 15 minutes of the movie, you decide, oh, but let's do a wrap up on all the stuff that we introduced in part two and, and part two infects this movie like, uh, like, like some kind of virus. And at the end of the movie, you're just left thinking, well, that was dumb. And that's not where you want to leave your horror movie is with your audience saying, I don't know if that was worthwhile. And it's, it undersells, it undercuts, undercuts is the word I was looking for there. It undercuts everything that came before. And, and makes this movie seem worse than it is because so much of it is pretty good. and But you walk out of it thinking, wait a second, so I've watched three movies to get to this? Well, this isn't satisfying at all. Uh, it's, uh, it's so frustrating. And there's another one coming. What you know, We'll talk about it on Found Footage Fool when we uh, talk about the, the Carmichael Manor episode. Um, or maybe that'll just be a Dark Parade episode. I'm not I'm not sure that it's going to be a found footage uh, film. I would assume so, but, you know, look, I would have also assumed that part two never would have happened because it was confusing and off-putting. Uh, this one, though, pretty pretty good for the most part, and, and that's why I'm sort of inviting your, your conversation about this is uh, for people who have followed the whole series, did you have the same reaction where you thought, Hey, this is pretty good. Oh, wait, what's going on again? <laughs> oh, what's happening? Why did this movie suddenly take a, a hard left into Stupidville? Uh, anyway, uh, we are going to do a couple of one-offs coming out of this. And then we've got another series that we're going to do. So we've done the subspecies series. We've done Hell House. We're going to do uh, maybe my favorite consistently good horror series horror franchise uh on the back end of a couple of one-offs so get ready for that couple of couple of movies uh that i've been meaning to catch up on or or recent releases that i feel like we ought to talk about and i am curious uh about some of those some of them i haven't even watched yet but that's fine it'll be good anyway uh have yourself an incredible wednesday 
enjoy the Halloween season. It is, uh, fall has finally fallen upon us, and I could not be happier. So I will see you tomorrow for another episode of the 31 Days of Halloween. Keep it spooky out there, everybody. See you then. Oh,